people come on tours every every week to my house, and this happens every week. People tell me, I buy organic food, but nothing I've ever bought tastes like this. Well, I think wherever you live, nature's showing you what to use. And say, so I live in the Northwest, we have an abundance of evergreen conifer trees. And so because of that's where I live and that's what is available and that's what's happening, I'm immediately connected. So wherever you live, there's something in nature that you can use to cover the ground with. And if you have nothing but rocks, rocks make a great cover. You can grow wonderful gardens and rocks. Are you interested in learning how to effortlessly raise your own food in the comfort and convenience of your backyard? Hi, this is Dr. Mercola, helping you take control of your health. And today we are joined by Paul Gauci, who has been an incredible personal inspiration to me and a, and a massive demonstration of what you can achieve in your own space to grow the, some of the healthiest, most nutritious, and here's the key, the tastiest food that you can possibly grow. So uh, welcome and thank you for joining us today, Paul. Thank you. So many, you know, we've had your video back to Eden, uh, which is my first exposure to your work. And we've had that on the, on the site and it was well received. And, you know, it, it, it's an area that many people recognize sort of intuitively that's important, but only don't understand the full depth of what is possible with this approach. And until I saw your video, I certainly never did. I mean, I just didn't get it at all. And now once you get the concept, you just, you almost like, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard when you see bare soil. <laughs> Because you know, you know it's possible. So why don't you share, for those of, of uh, our viewers who haven't heard you or watched the video Back to Eden, which we'd strongly recommend to do, uh, why don't you share a bit about your personal journey and how you grew up in, in L.A. and California, you made the transition up to Washington and, and started your, journey, your uh, process of really converting soil into this magnificent healthy, biodiverse, micro, microbiodiverse uh, cultures that can produce food that's so incredible. I was blessed. I grew up in a family. Both my grandparents and my parents grew all of our food. And so it was just a great growing up as a kid. Whenever you're hungry, you walk outside, and you can be totally satisfied with the abundant, delicious fruits and vegetables year-round. And I went all the way through high school, never missed a day of school because I never got sick. And I've always told people that if you're eating healthy live food, it's impossible to get sick. The body knows how to work, and if it's supported, it, it doesn't get sick. And so I just lived that way, and it was just you know so convenient, so nice, and, and I wanted to continue. As I grew up in L.A., L.A. changed. It was no longer a place fit to grow your own food. It became polluted. Land was limited. And I told my wife, I said, you know, the three things basic to human life are clean air, live food, you know, clean water, and live food. None exists here. So we need to find a place where we can do that for our family. So we moved to Washington State, Olympic Peninsula, beautiful spot, bought some land, built a house, and drilled a well, but faced a real challenge. Our well produced half a gallon a minute. Half a gallon a minute, you're not going to do any irrigating. And so it was August 79. It was a great year to build a house. didn't rain the whole summer. And I'm looking at my driveway coming up. It's totally dust. All my grass that's on my place is all brown. And I'm saying, God, how am I going to grow food trees for my family without water? He said, you're looking at the wrong thing. Turn around and look at, look at your woods. And I turn around and look at the back of my woods, the fir trees and hemlocks and firs, and they're lush green. We're talking like beautiful green. New growth coming out bright. And I says, okay, I get it. I pushed enough of these trees out when I built the house. I know they're shallow rooted. If you can show me how you do these without irrigation, I can do an orchard. So I went out to the woods with a fork, and I started moving this incredible covering over the ground, and I'm blown away at the, the depth of this moist, beautiful, living entity. And I'm realizing, you know where I built my house where the ground was clear? This didn't exist. It was hard pan and clay and rock. And it's not here. And I says, I get it. I can do this. And so I started planting my trees and covering. At that time, I had straw and sheep manure now I'm going to wood chips. And my orchard has not been watered or fertilized for 35 years. And it's produced abundantly beyond you know, what people can imagine. If you look at the film, you'll see my trees look different than any fruit trees you've ever seen in your life because they're all bent over. Because the weight of the apples are so full of water and minerals, it bends all the branches down, which makes it quite convenient. You never use a ladder, you can reach everything. But it's just so amazing to me how this 
doesn't work. And, it's, and what's so incredible is how we miss it because it's all around us in nature. Sure. The earth has a skin. It's been in place forever. And the thing that we do as human beings is we come and take the skin off and expose the ground and lose it all and corrupt it and don't get it. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, I'm wondering a few things. If when you initially started your your place up in Washington, was the was the intention just to grow an orchard, or was it also to grow uh, more food? You know, and what and what was so sad, um, Dr. McCall, is that I was tr I was trained to till the ground. We all all were, and so I thought I'm going to be really smart and resourceful here. And what I'll do is at night when we're not using water, I'll use a timer and water my garden. And for 17 years. I'm tilling this garden, growing food, and I'm killing myself, hauling out rocks, bringing in compost. Did, did you have the trees planted too in the orchard? The trees are planted, doing fine on their own with no attention. And I'm no, no, but wait, this is when you were tilling the soil. Yeah, but my trees I never tilled, and all that was maintaining itself with no water, uh. producing well, and in my face, I'm not getting it. So one day I'm out there, and, and, and it was a dramatic day. I'm pushing the stick down to set my string for my, you know, to make straight lines. And I go down six, eight inches, and I hit this, like, concrete hard pen. And I says, God, what's up to this? I have been killing myself to get soft, or beautiful soil in my garden. How come this hard pen is just not changing? And he was silent. I mean, no answer. Thinking, like, what's up with this? You're not going to talk to me? So I go out my orchard that day, and I start weeding. And for some reason, I just, got, I just had this thought to start moving these, this compost and see how deep it went. I'm down to my elbow in this beautiful black compost. And I got up angry, screaming, there's something wrong with this picture. I have been killing myself to get this in my garden. I didn't do anything here. And I hear inside, what well, works in your garden the same way you didn't ask. I was so angry, I threw that tiller away and started covering my garden with wood chips. But it's just, you know, it's amazing because of our training, we don't pay attention. We don't observe what's happening, and we just do what's wrong because we thought that's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> sure. No, I couldn't agree more. Um, now, I'm still a bit confused. <clears throat> did you actually put the chips down in your orchard, or is the, what, did, what did this uh, covering occur just because of the normal uh, fall of the no, leaves? No, I, 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 I added because, you see, I didn't have water, and I knew I could. the trees would not go oh, down. So I initially so started with sheep, sheep manure and straw, and then I've gone down to wood chips. Okay. Okay, so, so the that orchard was it. Has always had the cover. And then why, and again, it's just seeking to understand the process that you went through and the journey that you went through. Uh, what was the motivation to add the straw and the cover at that point? Was it just, was because, just because of the irrigation, or was this something you learned from other books? or? That's all I had available to me where I lived. It was the only place I could find material to cover the ground with. Okay, uh, and you just knew that was necessary for the orchard because if you didn't do that, you I had be no able... option because I couldn't water. Okay, I had to I had to hold water, and I observed in the woods how that the covering, the needles and leaves falling in the trees, held water. Okay, so no one taught you this. You just this is still from your no, observations. It was, a, it was an observation. It was I was directed to go out look in the woods by the, by God, and I did. And the, and, and this is for the orchard that you started for the orchard. Yeah. Okay, but it took you 17 years yeah. of hard labor to figure out that if it works in the orchard, it's going to work in the garden. Yeah, I'm being honest. I'm, I, I was that brain dead. <laughs> you know, yeah, I think, but most of us are, and that's uh, at least that's my observation because. Uh, you know, you, you, as I mentioned earlier, you really inspired me and motivated me. And, you know, once once I once you got it and I think I did get the light bulbs go off and you realize this is the answer. This is clearly the answer. And there's yeah. very few few people, including, you know, most organic farmers don't understand this. They, they, yeah, they're, they yeah, they're grow because organic food grown without pesticides is great. But wouldn't you want higher qual the highest quality bio nutri or nutrient dense food you can? And you can't get that without high quality soil. And compost alone doesn't cut it. It won't. I get so blown. People come on tours every every week to my house, and this happens every week. People tell me I buy organic food, but nothing I've ever bought tastes like this. And I says organic food is middle deficient. <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, 
the uh, so that that is that is that's one of the keys is you know getting the, these these uh, this covering down to improve the the quality of the soil uh, and uh, now initially uh, you you kind of learned through trial and error I guess that the wood chips were the best maybe you can take us on that that journey that you went on well I think wherever you live nature's showing you what to use and say so I live in the northwest we have an abundance of evergreen conifer trees. And so because of that's where I live and that's what is available and that's what's happening, I immediately connected. Now, you know, I've gotten amazing response from all over the world. Wherever people are, you know, there's something growing that you have, work as a cover. You know, mm -hmm. kind of so depending on your location, like Ruth South back in the East Coast, you know, wrote books about, you know, covering with straw because of what you had. So wherever you live, there's something in nature that you can use to cover the ground with. And if you have nothing but rocks, rocks make a great cover. You can grow wonderful gardens in rocks because rocks are minerals and, and, and they hold moisture. So there's, there's nothing wherever you live that you can't find to cover the ground with. Uh, great. So the, uh, uh, well, let's get into the one of the, you know, when we first put your film back to Eden and, and start encouraging people to consider the use of wood chips, you know, some pretty bright people who've been doing organic gardening for a long time, their response is, oh, yeah, I use wood chips. I put them in a compost, and they just don't get it. Yeah, that's that's certainly useful, but it's not the same as laying the chips on the, on the ground directly. So maybe you can address that because there's a huge, from my observation, a huge amount of confusion on this issue. The distinction between laying the chips on the soil directly and then putting them in a pile and composting them. Or also tilling them in. <laughs> it's even worse. That's, that's the, the worst. worst yeah. That's the worst. That's the worst. My sense, and again, it's a place to be humble, is that nature has been doing this for 6,000 years of recorded human history. It's really intelligent. And I'm the learner. I'm the new guy in the block. And I need to pay attention to what nature does and copy it. And this whole idea of creating compost piles, mixing and turning, is an asinine waste of time. And then you lose all the compost in a place you don't want it. So put whatever you have where you want it. Get out of there. Leave it alone. And get well without you. And if you try to help it, you're going to. Yes, I, yes, that's the key. Now let, let's discuss some of the reasons why wood chips are so good. So you know the encouragement is to do this. I mean, it's it, it, just to get some some personal history. You know, after I saw your film. I uh, am motivated. Well, I was in, actually in the process already of converting a significant portion of my ornamental landscaping to edible landscaping and just yanking more than half of it out. But a big portion of ornamental landscaping that's almost in everyone's property is their lawn. So, you know, I'm, t I'm getting rid of about half of my lawn and, and converting it over. And the way to do that is you could put down lots of newspaper or cardboard. And if you choose to use cardboard, you can use... Um, you have to make sure that there's no uh, shiny print on it, shiny ink, because that's not going to be good for the earthworms. Uh, and you have to take the tape off, too, because they don't like that. So, But you play that down, and that stops. You don't have to do this labor-intensive thing of pulling up the grass. You just put the carpet on and put the... And the grass the, is organic material. You want it to compost and, and return to the soil. Yeah. And then the, 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 the other key thing is that... Uh, it has so many benefits of the chips. Let's go into the benefits first, and then we'll go into some of the details. But the benefits, from my perspective, is that you uh, are able to radically reduce your irrigation. So let's let's review that first, because you you have a really good case history there, where you're growing your food in Washington. There's it's only raining like 14 inches a year. Yet for the like I think it's for the last 14 years or so, you haven't watered or irrigated your garden at all. Yet you get this incredible food. Your orchard. 35 years, I haven't irrigated the orchard. <laughs> 14 inches of water a year, and you never irrigate your orchard. Never. And what has been amazing to watch when droughts come in, and my neighbor's trees, all the leaves fall off in August. They're watering like crazy trying to save it. I'm looking at my trees, new growth acting like, oh, there's no drought here. We're fine. I'm just telling you, man, it's dramatic. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, again, we're trying, to, we're trying to help people understand this. So that's a, a huge benefit. You know, many parts is, uh, parts of the uh, the country, in the United States at least, uh, are going through the severe drought and water's at a premium. And, you know, you just, you're not going to be able to irrigate. You cannot irrigate. The water's not there. So that's one. The other one is weeds. 
my, it's my perception and observation that most people are challenged to commit to a gardening program because they do not like to weed. And I think that's a rational response. So why don't we get some feedback on the weeds from your perspective of doing this for so long? First of all, weeds is nature's way of covering the ground. If you expose the ground, nature's really angry, and they know it's not safe, and so they cover with weeds. So if you don't leave the ground, you go in nature where there's no more broth, there aren't any weeds. And the reason this happens is because you're watering every day to keep things wet. Every time we do something, where my wood chips never get watered all summer long, I have no weed because it's dry on top. But down below where the roots are, it's totally damp. So the, 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 you're, you reduce your weeding. I mean, there's some weeding that occurs because, you know, plants will grow in the wood chips. But it's, it's, a, it's radically reduced, probably upwards of 90%. Is, would and that be fair? Weed. And yeah, and, and they pull easy. And yeah, fine. Now, yeah. I was going to get to that. Yeah, it's real easy to pull them up. You don't have to like break your break break your back with a shovel or a spade and and get the, oh, all the last roots. Yeah. yeah. So that is phenomenal. So so the irrigation and the weeding are two immediate magnificent benefits, but the far more important ones are are what it does to the quality of the food that you produce in there, whether it be trees or plants that you're going to harvest. So. Uh, and consume. So how does it do that? Well, let's go into some of the science. One of the primary, you know, the, it's all about the microbiology of the soil. And 70, Paul Stamets says, I don't know that, I haven't been able to research or confirm it, but he, he believes, he's a pretty well-respected fungi researcher, says that 70% of the microbes in the soil are fungi. So we'll accept that as true. And if that's true, then wouldn't it make sense to feed those fungi? Well, what's one of the best ways you can feed fungi is wood chips. There's just no question about it. That is just a phenomenal component. You build up this my mycorrhizal fungi, these filaments that go all underneath there, communicate with all the other trees and the plants. And that's one of the best things that you can do to improve the quality. So maybe you can comment on, the, on your experience with the, the fungi. This is, this is what I see. And again, if you look at nature, every fall, the creator puts a covering of needles and leaves over the whole planet, and everything grows great. I mean, we, it's just so pathetic that we don't pay attention. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm looking at, at the, the, the speed of how things grow. I mean, I, I planted sequoia trees as, a, as a, you know, a, a border here, and people always ask me, how fast do I grow? I said, that's up to you. Just to do a demonstration, I planted one in a wood chip covering, and I mean, a whole bunch of wood chip covering, one I planted in, in dirt. One I planted in dirt is one third the size of the other one. It's just, I mean, it's dramatic. Yeah. You know, my neighbors, my neighbors have a cherry tree that's 20 years older than mine. It's one third the size, totally dilapidated looking. I mean, it's it's just it's not like slightly different. It's like dramatically different. Yeah. You know, and it's all about roots. You know, I, I have dwarf trees. The dwarf trees are created by develop by grafting a desired cultivar in a root stock that doesn't develop roots. Because you have a small root system, you have a small tree, dwarf. I have a seven-year-old dwarf plum that have root suckers come out of 30-foot radius, not diameter, radius in the trunk in eight years. I'm just blown away, like, what? <laughs> you know? And this is the beauty of it. When you have a root system that big, you don't need a lot of water because it has the capacity to feed from such a wide area, it can take up a lot. You know, so, again, it's just so dramatic, the effects and power of the covering. Well, just just focus on the root system a little tangent before we go back into the other reasons why the wood chips work. Uh, it, it's most people, and I certainly was one of these people, were under the false impression that the roots of a tree typically only go out to the drip line, which might you know be five, ten feet or so. But you, I mean, in your videos and the tour, videos of tours of of your your garden and your place, that you've got uh, you have got clear evidence where it's going out to thirty feet or more. From the tree, and as, as and, and that's just in one direction. So it's a, obviously much bigger as a as, as a as a diameter. So uh, this is the beauty of it. You know, and what I think is so cool is these are dwarf trees that aren't supposed to develop roots. So what, I, <laughs> yeah. what, so what I'm getting is nature is so powerful; it just overrides all the boundaries. I'm not going to stop growing here. I'm not going to be a dwarf. I'm just going to live. You know, I just, I sure. Just, man, it's so beautiful. How, how many trees do you have in your orchard? Um, over 40. Okay. That's, 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 it looked like about that many. So and I, I'm kind of envious of your sequoia. I was in Yosemite last year uh, before they had the fire, and it was really 
one of the most magnificent experiences. I mean, those. I mean, if you, if anyone listening to this has not seen a sequoia, you just got to. It's it's the largest living structure in the planet. I mean, it's just it, your jaw will drop. You just be in awe, awe of what can what can grow. <laughs> so I tried to plant some down here in Florida, but it didn't work because I didn't have the wood chips yet. You know, I'm going to try again. Do it again. Don't grow. Yeah. So uh, now one of the other benefits of wood chips and another benefit of using cardboard or the newspaper to, to cover your lawn and, and develop the cover with wood chips is that you will attract earthworms. And earthworms are like one of the hidden mysteries of the soil. A lot of people are familiar with the vermicompost, which is sort of the, uh, the, the side benefit of earthworms. But there, there's these tunnelers. And, you know, it, it kind of remo- it emphasizes the point, too, in your experience with your tilling, that, that the land was never designed to be tilled. Part of the reason, and it's a huge reason, is that it destroys these mycorrhizal filaments. And you, the, this, this fungal communication just ceases once you till the foil. Then you just decimate the microbiology in the soil. So that's why you don't want to do it. But the natural way to do it is let the earthworms till it. That's what they are. And when you've got the wood chips on, that's food for the earthworms, and you're going to, they're going to start doubling and tripling every year. And uh, that's, that's just massively huge. And so why is that such a good thing? Because they make compost, and they'll, they'll convert that soil to healthy soil. And, uh, and you can literally, in some really dense areas I've read, like in the Nile, they're making per acre like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 tons of compost a year per acre. And that they don't have to, you don't have to lug that. They, they, they're making it in real time. You know, it's all free, which is so, so beautiful. And see, these are the kind of things that just can really bless me. When I look at nature to see how incredibly it's designed for the maintenance and support of the, of the whole environment. Everything's connected except us. Everything's working really well in, in, you know, in harmony, support of one another, except us. We're messing it up. And it's just like, come on up with this. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, especially now, now that we're in the 21st century, we've and, uh, you know, our culture and society has managed to mess things up largely through the result of some large uh, corporations who are clearly more self-interested in pr- their profits than in, in, in helping serve mankind, uh, that, uh, you know, we've got this challenge with uh, genetically modified foods and this massive use of herbicides and pesticides. And, uh, you know, we're actively involved in helping label that food, but that's only one part of the equation. And from my perspective, that's a relatively negative side. It's kind of like, you know, after the fact, I think a far more uh, useful strategy is to encourage, motivate, inspire people to grow their own food. The prior to, well, well, 70% of the food in the world is grown in backyard farms or small farms. In the U.S., it's under 2%, but we doesn't mean it has to stay that way. If they can capture the techniques that you're describing with this wood, these wood chips, we can we can get people to grow incredibly healthy food, healthier than they can purchase at certainly any grocery store, but actually healthier than they can purchase at most lo- the local farmers markets and from even local organic producers because they aren't using wood chips. And here's a, de- a detail people don't realize that in 10 minutes, not 10 minutes, after fruits investors pick, they lose up to 80% of their metabolic properties. Not if, you know, this is why we were putting a garden up front, and you're supposed to be eating your food fresh in season. And everything in nature except us, all the animals, all the birds, eat food fresh in season. They don't have refrigerators, don't have stoves, don't go to doctors, have health insurance. We're not getting it. You're, you're supposed to pick it and eat it, not put it in the refrigerator and let it die and cook and kill the enzymes. So crazy how we live. Yeah, yeah, it is. So even if you're buying it, you know, supposedly fresh and local, it's going to have been picked at some point. I mean, it, it, hopefully within 24 hours, but frequently longer than that. So the the optimal best way to, to get get your food is through your in your backyard or your front yard. So uh, you know, hopefully we'll inspire more people to do this because it, it doesn't require a little time, effort, and energy. But the other beautiful thing about using wood chips is that it's a waste material. And, and anyone who knows me personally knows that I absolutely abhor waste. And most of these wood chips right now are currently that landscapers are cutting down trees. They're putting them in landfills, which goes to create methane, which is a far worse uh, greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So, you know, you're saving these chips from the, from the dump and you're putting them to good use the way they were designed to. 
So that you know, and it, but it does take you know for a, even if you're going to have a small plot, you're going to need a few of these. We don't want to get people confused. It's not like going to the store and get a bag of mulch and throw it in on your plants, and that's going to do it. You're going to need quite a bit of these. Maybe we can go go over that process, and we can tell them how to do it. And then the, well, actually, before we do that, I had a question about. Because the, the, there's two ways to do this. One is for the perspective of the people growing this themselves. And then there's this other broader perspective is the commercial application of this. And I'm wondering if you've thought about this or had any personal experiences of you know small farms actually adopting this technology of the wood chips. I mean, for the orchards, it's a slam dunk. I just can't imagine why any orchard wouldn't be doing this. But 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 for producing food, I'm wondering what if, if, if you're familiar with any uh, small farming operations that are using the wood chip method. You know, all over the world, and again, I tell people, you know, the creator has been doing this on millions of acres all over the world. It's not like, you know, limited to space. Wherever, whatever you're growing, put back. You know, it's, it's that simple. If you're ra raising corn, chop the stalks and put it back. If you're raising grain, put the, the straw back. Whatever you do, put it back. And that's, it doesn't have to be a wood chip. Any organic material laying on the ground compost and returns to the soil that the plants took out. It's so common sense simple. And so, you know, and, and, and my sense is, you know, you don't do a, a million acres. And you know, start small and learn as you go. And as you progress, you get more efficient, you know. Yeah. And you don't you don't do have to, you know, take on the whole world at once. Just do, do steps, and and it's just I tell you, it's so amazing, so simple. You can't fail. Yeah, and you don't really need a lot of space. I mean, you, you know, if you, if you, most backyards, I don't think your people are going to run into problems with zoning restrictions. A lot, a lot of front yards they might because your neighbors might be upset that you're growing vegetables in your front yard uh, or even homeowners associations. But but in your backyard, you'd probably be OK. So that's, you know, I'm, I'm actually helping convert a few of my friends' backyards completely to wood chips. And, uh, you know, that's going to grow incredible food for you. And the, the one of the reasons, you know, you evolved using wood chips over the other alternatives because for a number of reasons. One is that it's so much better, especially if you get it with the leaves on them. You know, a freshly cut tree is going to be your best strategy. You know, it were, needles. Yeah, the leaves and the needles, right. And, uh, the, and you want to really apply it relatively quickly uh, within the first, ideally, the first 24 hours of the tree having been cut, uh, certainly within the first 48 hours. And the, and the reason you want to do that is if you wait longer, that's going to start to decompose, and there'll be a lot of dust, which can have some health problems if you're, if you're spreading it around. So if you do decide to, for whatever reason, to spread around wood chips that are older than two days, I would strongly encourage to wear a mask. So you don't want to breathe that stuff in because it could it can cause problems over time. So uh, that's just a practical thing. But you need a wheelbarrow and, you know, just a little labor. And, uh, you know, most small properties are going to need a few truckloads of these. You know, I've got like probably a quarter acre I'm converting. I'm probably putting 20 to 30 truckloads. Each truckload is about 10 yards, which is about 2,000 pounds of, of wood chips. So, uh, but that'll last, it's a one-time investment, you know, and, and they're free, but it's a one-time investment of labor because once you're put there, you don't have to keep on redoing it. Why don't you tell us your experience with, you know, with the, uh, apply the chips, how many, how many truckloads you put in and, you know, how, how frequently you had to reapply them. Well, I put wood chips in my orchard 16 inches deep around my trees, 16 inches. It was 14 years ago. I did nothing to I'm starting to add now because it's broken down. And I had 14 years of absolutely no work, no input, and abundant return. I mean, it's awesome. That's pretty interesting. So maybe an inch a year or so. But my guess is that's partially related to your climate because you don't get much rain. And my guess is that if you're in a, a – a climate, an area where it's going to rain more, that it might decompose more rapidly. You might have to put it on more frequently. Uh, but that's a, that's actually not necessarily a bad thing because all that's going into the soil, you're just building a better soil. So it's it's all good. It's all about carbon. You know, the reason why wood chips are so good is carbon, and carbon is organic matter that that you know turns into humus and and it holds the water so that you don't have to irrigate and really provides structure and moisture and homes for the bacteria and the and the microbes. So uh, it's a key issue. So um, I just want to bring to your attention as an amazing article that came out in the August September issue. The Amazing Underground Secret to a Better Garden, and they really explain and talk about all the stuff that you're addressing happening in the soil 
under a wood chip covering. It is an awesome article. It's in Mother. What is it? What is the journal again? Mother's Mother's News Magazine, the the August September issue, and okay. the, the title is The Amazing Underground Secret to a Better Garden, and it really addresses all these fungus and stuff that happened in a in a compost environment, laying on top of the ground. And they clearly state you never have exposed ground, you always covered. It's just I'm telling you, Damn. I'm so thankful that people are starting to get this. This, the, 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 you know, this the re, the revelation is starting to get out, and people are, you know, it's, it's happening everywhere. And I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Well, you've been you, you really catalyzed a revolution. It certainly sparked my interest into it. So, and the key thing though is that you def, we said it before. But I just want to reemphasize that you don't bury these chips. I mean, you're going to ask for trouble. You will decimate the health of your plants because you're going to suck up nitrogen from the soil. Yeah. And you see, you stress the soil by trying to break it down. This is the yeah. thing that I want people to get is the creator who can do anything omnipotent never disturbs the ground and he never mixes. All he does is layer. And we need to pay attention. Observe the master. You know, he's a master gardener. He knows what he's doing. And just observe, copy, you know, and and what's so amazing is the easiest is the best. All this work we do is counterproductive. Yeah, that is you know, it's it's a sort of a principle I learned in health after three decades. I've really sort of mastered some of the principles of how to stay healthy and when you look and look back you realize it's it's all the basic simple things they're all there's nothing complicated <laughs> it's about it. as simple as it can be you know you know but medicine wants to do the exact opposite they want to make it complex and you know so, there's certainly a need for that and thankfully we have that as a resource you know if you get in a trauma and big accident you're going to need a fairly sophisticated surgery to help recover but for the most part 95 percent of the time all you need is a simple basics and that covers it. So that's really a clue that you're t- turned into something that's right, it's correct, it's it's sort of an eternal truth if it's simple. Yeah. You know, which is what one of the things that resonated so mel- well with me with this 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 process that you have. Now, just continuing on what uh, those listening can do is so you can get to 16 inches, and that's really great. You can even go higher. There's some people who go higher, and uh, if you're for the orchard, you know where you're not going to plant things in there. It's going to take some while to break it down. But if you're going to plant food, you don't really want to go more than four to six inches because the plants right. have to pop up side of that thing. Well, you, and you have to pull them to back inside of the soil initially. Yeah. The chips are not a growing medium; they're a covering of support to the soil. And so when you're planting small seeds, you've got to pull the material back and plant in the soil. Yeah, and then and may, and and you know now as as we're recording this, it's the middle of summer, so it would be a perfect time for many to start their garden for next year. Because especially if you're going to convert lawns, it's going to take a while for those chips to break down and to create this this miraculous growth. Uh, the medium to, to grow food. So, you know, if you put it down six, nine months and when you go planting in the spring, you're just going to be shocked out of your shoes is what's going to be growing because you've got the best soil around. That's, that, that's the other reason, aside from go- pulling weeds and irrigating, that people don't want to garden is because almost everyone's soil is terrible. But it could be the, the covering be- was taken off. <laughs> yeah, they got terrible soil. So all they have to do is convert it with the wood chips, and you've got some of the best soil anywhere. Let, let me tell you an awesome experience. A guy came here on a tour a couple weeks ago from um, Idaho, and I took him back to my place, and I showed him where the ground was exposed, my hard pan clay and rocky can't break with a pick. And he saw that. And he walks over to my, my herb garden. He gets on his knees. He starts moving these wood chips. And this guy's down to his elbow. It's this gorgeous black stuff. And he says, he's just flipping out. He says, I cannot believe this. I'm moving this with my fingers. And, I'm, and I can't. And, it, and, it, and I, I saw his soil. And it's just so dramatic how the covering changes that hard man. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just incredible. And, you know, you, you mentioned earlier it's all about the minerals, and that's one of the reasons why you use this organic material because it's loaded with minerals, and it's acquired over many years and frequently decades of its of its growth, previous growth, and it's accumulated and concentrated, and it's able to provide it back into the soil. Can uh, I give you some stats here that's going to blow your mind? Sure, sure. I, I got, a, I got a, a soil test from the International Ag Labs. In, in the oh, yeah, I heard this is, is great. Montana. You got This is great. We got to put this listen, in. This is, listen to these numbers. Uh, on the test, you get two, 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 two lines, the desired level that you want, and your lab results. I'll just give you the, the, um, the nitrates. The desired level is 40. My lab results, 120. Phosphorus. The desired level is 174. Mine is 2,345. 
Potassium, desired level 167, mine's 1154. Coming down to the smaller numbers, zinc, desired level is 1 to 6, mine's 21.5. What I love about this, I didn't do anything. Well, you put the chips down. <laughs> as far as trying to create minerals, I just right. put a covering down and nature did this. I'm just telling – and see, this is why my food tastes so good. With this high mineral content, the flavor is over the top. Yeah, and that's the other thing, you know, if, you know, people get in t that people get intimidated by with gardening. Says, well, and, and, and some really, if you talk to really bright organic growers, they say, well, you got to do a soil test, and then you got to put back the minerals that aren't there, and you start this complex chemistry experiment that really doesn't work. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's just you, you just provide it's sort of a shotgun approach, but it, but that's what works because the so the minerals that it needs it'll use it doesn't it just you know it actually everything's used because it feeds the microbes ultimately the, the plants may not need that specific mineral but the microbes certainly will and they'll ultimately feed the the plants and help the plants produce these incredible chemicals to ward off diseases so you're not only do you are your 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 the food that you're producing is incredibly nutrient dense and tasty but it doesn't get sick it's healthy because it can totally. fight off all the diseases. You never have to spray for any for any pest. Why don't you, why don't you tell us about that? When, when, when things are, are healthy in nature, no bug touches it. I have slugs, bugs, everything here, and, and when they bite into my plants, they drown. <laughs> there's so much water content, they can't get the cells and fiber. Bugs and insects only attack dehydrated, stressed, unhealthy plants. And that's the design in nature. See, everything in nature is so in line with the maintenance support of the environment, it's not negative. And see, when an insect attacks your plant, it's telling you your plant's not well. It's dehydrated. So don't go kill the insect. Correct your, the problem. Yeah. And the insect leaves. I just, I, my wife goes to the nursery and brings in the plant, puts it on my property. It immediately gets covered with slugs, and they take it out. I love it. It's such a dem they touch nothing here, but if something comes from outside that's not well, they know, and they take it out. Yeah, yeah, I, I love your perspective. I heard it once where you're saying that uh, it's you know bugs aren't the enemy; they're they're God's uh, police, police keep force. police force. Yeah, that uh, really patrols things and keeps things in t in t intact. You see, if unhealthy plants produce seed, you'd eventually become extinct. And so insects take out the unhealthy, so only the healthy produce seed and maintain healthy plants. The design is so perfect, so balanced, so right. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's great stuff. So, the uh, you know I think that's most of the big ones that we wanted to go over is just just in, encouraging people to just try this you know and I think it's a little bit late in the season to try it now you could you know especially if you live somewhere warmer or tropical some subtropical environment but but most likely it's it's a matter of getting your ducks in a row can making the commitment to do it getting making the finding this local contractor you may have to you know it's not going to be in the book free wood chips you're not going to find if you find an ad for it in the paper you're going to have tree to do services. it tree, tree services, services is, is, the, is the ideal and like the you know the the, the the power cutters who have to clear their power lines they have access to a lot of the stuff so just pay attention of who's doing clearing of trees and access use them yeah, now, the, one of the, I'm actually talking to a, uh, a very large organic blueberry grower, one of the largest in the country later today, and uh, he found through his research that for blueberries, at least, that the, 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 the evergreens and the pines were particularly useful because, he, at least I heard, I haven't heard talking directly, but someone told me that they were produced more of an acid uh, from that. Has is, 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 is it been your experience that there's benefits from different trees, one of versus another uh, for a specific... My experience, my experience is they all work well mm -hmm. because the creator takes nothing off the planet and then goes back to dirt. And what so blows me away is the perfect balance that it provides. See, I'm growing blueberries, which are, which are uh, acid-loving plants, and right next to it I grow cucumbers, and they're both thriving because the pH in my soil is 7.0, perfectly balanced. Another thing that really blows my attention is Gets my blows my mind and it gets my attention is the water requirements. I am growing wasabi, which is impossible to grow in any place but standing water and shade. I'm growing it in full sun, in wood chips right next to uh, sage, side by side, and I'm not irrigating, and I am flipping out. Here I have the extremes of water requirement. One, one wants none. It's a desert plant. The other wants wants to be in standing water, and they're thriving in the same place, and I'm not watering. I'm just telling you, this system is so perfect. It, requ it meets all the requirements of anything growing, 
and there's no absolutely no adjustment anyone has to do. Yeah, it's just it's just magnificent, and I and I so greatly appreciate your willingness to observe and learn from your own mistakes and and develop a system and cons, you know be consistent with it and diligent and and uh, that provides us with a with a process a method that we could every pretty much everyone listening to this can use and start growing their own food almost effortlessly after after you've gone through the initial uh, investment of time and labor to put the wood chips in and what i'm finding is that i'm doing all the things they say you can't i'm intentionally doing things that aren't supposed to work i'm growing potatoes underneath my apple trees i'm growing asparagus in the shade of my apple trees I'm, it's just so awesome. I'm, I'm starting to get that all these things they say you can't do is because they're coming from a broken <laughs> And in nature, nothing's broken. Yeah, that's, you know, that's sort of a, the irony of it because a lot of this wi supposed wisdom that says we can't do this are from really intelligent, committed, uh, organically oriented uh, people who are, who've been studying this their whole lives. They just don't, they don't, they're not seeing the full picture. And I always say the reason we have large farms in the United States is because they produce so little. <laughs> yeah. You don't need a lot of space if you have healthy ground. You yeah. don't need a lot of space. Yeah, in fact, if, I, I think it's probably the – I don't think there's almost ever a need for a farm more than 50 acres, and even that's pushing it. But for your personal use, a quarter acre, I mean, you can grow a lot of food for more than your family, probably a few families on a quarter acre. It's incredible. And under my trees, what an asset the trees are. In the summer when it's hot, you can grow cilantro and arugula in the shade. It does great. In the winter, they, they provide a protection. So it doesn't beat down my kale. I mean, you can see in, in typical orchards, all they do is grow, you know, have hard compacted ground or weeds because there's no covering. But in the covering, it's unlimited potential. You can grow everywhere. Yeah, it's just great stuff. So uh, I think we've covered most of the, the points I wanted to. Do you have any other uh points you'd like to make? I think, you know, your question on, on this whole issue of, of, of how agriculture is being really challenged with all these chemicals and stuff. Oh, gosh, if, yeah. If people became responsible and grew their own food, the chemical companies would become extinct because no one would buy their products. Yeah. Because you don't need them. I, make, I, I have absolutely no need for any fertilizer, any pesticide, any herbicide, any fungicide, yeah. ever. It's, I have no need. And so if, if, if you come to that state... These companies will become extinct because they're no one's buying their product. Well, I don't, you know, these are large corporations with multi billion dollars revenues, and they typically tend, like any, they're almost a living organism and they tend not to die. They want to be self preserved. That's their natural growth. So, but, but I, but I agree with you that you provided us with the example that, that is, it is possible. See, if you don't know it's possible, you, you, you know, you wouldn't even strive for it, but it is possible. You've shown that you can do it. But so if we start doing this more, what we do is we start decreasing the need for those, the, those products. These companies aren't going to go away and die they won't become extinct what they'll do is they'll they'll start serving us better they'll start supplying us with products that truly will fill for that serve us that will we will buy so they'll morph into something beneficial you know yeah. that, that 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 is a reasonable thing to expect and we can do and that's what i'm inspired to do that's pretty much what i'm shifting my mission to is because ultimately with health you've got to have the good food if you don't have good food you cannot be healthy i mean that's that's sort of the it's to me the ultimate uh this decision or end point that most people reach in health is, is they wind up gardening because that's, that's the conclusion so you know my that's my new my new passion now is to inspire people to start growing their own food. And, you, and you've got the best system I've seen. There's some so some fine tweaks with it, with the minerals, because I think ultimately the wood chips will provide the minerals. But in the beginning phases, the, there's full, full your mineral applications that can be done that would really magnificently synergize with this process. So... Uh, Again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for so being su such a de dedicated uh, uh, witness and observer and, and, a, and a diligent student of what uh, God has shown you and how to grow really healthy food and do it the right way with uh, conserving uh, with typically discarded resources. Yep. It's 
beautiful. You know, to me, it's just, you know, it, it's the design. The, the creator's wise, and he made things easy, you know. And, you know, I love um, um, George Washington Carver's made an awesome comment. He says, if the solution is simple, God is answering. I love that. You know, simple is so convenient. Yes, <laughs> it is. You get lost there. It's a very safe place. And it's typically <laughs> relatively inexpensive, too. <laughs> yeah, it's just very convenient. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for all you do. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll be in touch again because uh, I really want to work with you and help spreading this message that uh, you have. And, and thanks so much for creating that, that Back to Eden film. I think a few million people have seen it. And it was our goal to get that up to tens of millions of people because they need to see it and hear this message. It's a really powerful one. It's going to be so useful for, for all of us. Well, I want to thank you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate you, your heart, and your, you know, what you're doing. And I just think if more of us do this kind of thing, we can, we can change things for the better. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right, well, thanks, thanks so much, Paul. appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day. All right, you too. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, hit the like and subscribe button so you can get more videos that can help you and your family take control of your health.